Hello and welcome back, I'm Shell Wizard. I'm going to do a continuation video here on my FS17 tutorial uh, for importing the AB water storage. Uh, in the previous video I obviously showed how to get it into a map and set it all up um, in a different area. You may have noticed if you've watched that video. Um, and the reason that is because that particular map got deleted and I had in this particular case created an, a new sample mod map of Goldcrest Valley because I was going to do a video on a couple of other mods I was going to import and I wanted to create this area to put them in but uh, um, it then became I don't know that, that that particular video I think is going to be a three-parter so I wanted to get this one out of the way first uh, before I started getting deep into the other two mods um, and yeah, I wanted to have a bit bit of a further look into this one because in that previous video I mentioned about it not being 100% complete in my opinion. Because it's been converted from Fabric Script over to M Company, um, I would imagine more so because of the Fill From Rain function, which is part of the M Company script, which is not part of Fabric. So that may have been the reasoning behind the conversion over to M Company. Don't know for sure on that, but. Um, the limitation of the M company then would be without the M company graphic script running alongside it, you have no information because um, your your information is very limited depending on how it's been the mod has been set up. But because it's a fabric script conversion, it's relying on the uh, good old display that we're pretty much used to in fabric script mods and whatever else. Uh, but in our trigger, our interactive trigger, which is generally speaking just in front of the screen we would have our F1 menu up and when we entered that interactive trigger we would get information show up in our F1 menu so it would tell us what the inputs were and what the outputs were obviously in this particular case it's water in water out but uh, if it was something else and it required multiple ones we wouldn't know unless it had uh, nice pretty decals um, what it required because we have no information in our F1 menu um, and that's where the M Company graphic script comes into play because it gives us our nice display on screen when we enter the interactive trigger um, and we're lacking that in this particular mod so I wanted to put this video together to try and show how we can actually set up the M Company graphic XML to then give us that information um, on screen irregardless of whether the actual mod itself is running or not. Uh, so I want to start in game here just to show you that I've got the mod in, in the map already. It's all imported. I've just got the same as I did before. The small JCB, fast track and the water Bowser. Uh, put some water in it and it transferred, did all its thing, got no errors, etc, etc. So it's all imported in it all works using the M Company script and whatever else, which is fine. Um, but now what I want to do is actually come out onto the desktop and put the M Company graphic XML together and show, hopefully show how to integrate that into the mod as well. So come into Giants Editor then and going to do our setup now to get the M Company graphic all integrated into the actual mod itself. Now we know we've got all the scripts and everything else all set up in the map, it all works, I've got my own company stuff all set up in here um, and whatever else, got some parts in the mod desk to make it all work, I can assure you it does work, the mod does work but the M company graphic stuff was not set up completely to give us our shiny shiny graphic and everything else in screen, So, or, or on screen I should say, so that's what we're going to be covering next um, I've just put um, the mod here in the transform group add-ons because I do plan on adding in a few extra bits and pieces for some other mods I'm going to be looking at like I say so if we actually highlight the main mod itself the water storage facility factory whatever you want to call it we need to create a new user attribute in here so in our add new attribute we go m company graphic xml and it needs to be set up that particular way so just take note of that if you put it in any other way it won't work at least as far as I know um, 
I even put in M Company Graphics once and it didn't like that. So just make sure you spell it right, which I always seem to have trouble with. And this needs to be set up as a string. So we'll click Add. And then in here, we need to put our path file name to the actual area that we're going to put the XML in and obviously the name of the XML itself. Um, I'll probably say put it in your scripts folder and create a new folder maybe call this M company like so and then put your actual M company XMLs in this particular folder you can put it wherever you want but to keep it somewhat sort of um, you know tidy and whatever else then you know I think that would probably be the best way to do it I'll put all my M company stuff through there uh, linking in you know in the same place as all the scripts and whatever else but that's just personal choice put it wherever you want to put it and you're comfortable with um, so I'm going to put in my path file name so I've got maps scripts M company and I spelled that wrong M company and then I need to put in my actual name of the XML so I'm just going to call this a B water storage and you need to make sure you put the dot XML on the end of it so it knows it's looking at an XML if you put anything else because it could be looking at it could you know this is just a path file name to something so it could be referring to an i3d or an XML or whatever so just make sure you finish it off with the exact object that it is actually looking for uh, or file that it's looking for in this particular case obviously it's looking for an XML so I've got my setup all in there, just checking that I've spelled everything correctly. Map scripts, yeah, so tab across just to lock that in. So I need to remember obviously to call my um, M company graphic XML AB water storage, and that needs to be spelt in the same way with uppercase and lowercase letters in the right place and all the rest of it. Um, okay, so a couple more changes I'm going to make in here because I'm going to be adding in a few extra bits and pieces. I want to change some parts um, to make all of this um, a mod of its own because with the M Company graphic, uh, if you were to have multiple M Company mods on the map all using the same input, output, the same names, there could be some conflicts. Um, obviously it's going to be looking at a specific XML but I think for safety sake it's uh, better to just give your inputs and output triggers um, specific names to the actual mods and whatever else again that's entirely up to you so in this particular case I would probably rename the input trigger to input trigger underscore AB and then the output trigger do the same so underscore AB hit tab lock it in and then in your resources and your products we have got names here already you can change them to whatever you want uh, for me I'm actually going to remove the space because I don't like spaces in this in these kinds of setups because they can also cause some conflicts and issues so I'm going to um, delete the space and I'm going to put an underscore in there as well so just goes from water space transferring to water underscore transferring and then this one I'm going to do the same so I'm going to um, delete the space put an underscore tab make the change and lock it in uh, so that's fine so we can now work with all those parts but I now need to update the mod desk to change all these parts because in the mod desk at the moment it's just saying input trigger and I've obviously changed it to something different, so I need to change that. But I also want to add in to the mod desk my extra parts for the names, so that that will then link into the M Company graphic. So I'm just going to minimise the actual um, giant set session here because I will need to refer back to that to get the text and whatever else. We'll open up the mod desk for the map itself here because this is where I'm going to need to make my changes I've just got the standard set up from the actual mod itself I just copied over the parts um, but obviously it does work you know we've got all our bits and pieces all showing up and doing what they're meant to be doing so we have no errors there but obviously I need to make a few changes now to the parts to make it all work and whatever else so um, what I'm going to do then is 
just take the name from here just to make sure that it's spelt correctly and whatever else and we'll update this one do the same with the output trigger so we'll take this one output trigger um, for now I'm just going to leave it as it is and not change any parts so I don't need to change that really uh, you could type any different text in there you wanted to type but I'm just going to leave it as it is uh, but I do need to add in my uh, extra parts here specifically for the M company graphic stuff so I've got water transferring and then water stored so what I'll do is if I go back into the XML here I'll just take a copy of this line that's fine doesn't really matter a couple of spaces and we'll paste that in twice like so so I'll take the input first water transferring and we'll paste that into there um, so you could again put whatever you want in here I'm going to keep it simple and just go water transferring and we'll put a space uh, not too fussed about the translations at the moment so just delete that and then at this particular one we've got water stored so I'm going to make a copy of that paste that into there and I'll paste it into there and remove the underscore and put the space so um, this is why I say you don't like spaces I don't like spaces in the actual user attributes but in the mod desk that's fine in your actual text so we have our underscore for our name but the text what's going to be showed in in game on screen on the in the graphic will be without the underscore but with the space so all sort of links in and makes a bit more sense to me anyway hopefully it will to you guys as well okay so we have all those parts set up there now I'm also going to need to add in another one uh, for the mod itself so we have a header in the um, M company graphics so it, 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 it tells us what the actual mod itself is uh, so I'm going to make a copy of that line and we'll put that up there uh, what I will do is actually make a space there to separate each part out um, and then this one here I'm going to put in a b water storage and then in this one over here I can then just put in there a b water storage like so just to keep it nice and simple you can put in whatever you want in there but that's that's going to work for me hopefully uh, so we'll go ahead and save that um, we've changed all the parts we need to change now just save the map and update that make sure it's all um, any changes I've made there have, have been saved and what have you and we can then close the map down because don't need this open anymore for now uh, so now I need to obviously create my M company graphic so all I've done here is I've taken one from Hofbergman map which has been created for a biodiesel home plant so I'm going to open this one up and I'm just going to make my changes to this to make it work for me for the water storage uh, so <clears throat> at the top here we have our header which is basically the mod itself what the mod does or what it's designed to do this was a biodiesel home plant but I obviously want it to be our water storage so I'm going to take the AB water storage um, L10 end text from there and we'll just overwrite this one like so and then also need to take our input trigger so it can de you know, um, determine which is which it can give us our different displays to show which is the input and which is the output and this is shown by our onset text name input and onset text name output so if you have multiple inputs you would need to make duplicates of these up here and then for your outputs if you have multiple outputs make sure you use the output section for that uh, so we'll take our input trigger bdhp and overwrite that with the input trigger ab and i'll do the same for the output so we'll take that one and overwrite that and we don't want obviously biodiesel home plant grain so I'm going to take my water transferring which is the input trigger text and I'm going to overwrite all three of those 
we have our text, our numbers and our actual uh, bar that goes across the screen and whether it's going to give us a percentage or not and the rest of it. So we need all those parts to give us the same display from our water transferring trigger which is why we're linking all those together. Then we have our water stored so we're going to take that one and change our output over to that from the biodiesel home plant biodiesel. So we're going to change those over to the water stored. Uh, this one I don't need so I can get rid of that. So we have all of our parts there hopefully set up in the way they should be. Let's just double check. Yeah, that all links together. That's fine. Excellent. That all links together. Yep. Looking good. But obviously I don't want to call it biodiesel home plants. So I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm going to rename this to AB water storage to match what I put in the user attribute that I created within the giant editor session. Uh, so that will then find that and link it all together once I put it in the appropriate folder. I'm going to put it on my desktop, that's fine, I'll just move it manually. So I'll go save. We can now close that down. Uh, we don't need that anymore. Close that down. And I'm just going to then go maps, scripts, end company, and bring that XML into there. Okay, so next thing we need to do then is add a couple more, a another user attribute um, into the inputs and outputs. Uh, in the newer version of the script, uh, the M company script, it will actually automatically put in the unit identifier for the inputs and outputs. So in here we need to add a um, identify a user attribute to say what unit we're going to be working with uh, which could be a liter or piece or whatever it might be so we need to add in those parts so that it can understand what it is we're actually looking for and all the rest of it so um, doesn't matter which one we do so in here then we need to have our u new user attribute and we need to put in unit and then this needs to be a string. So we go add and then in here we type in liter and tab across to lock it in. Exactly the same for this one. Unit string add and then type in liter tab to lock it in. And that's it. That's now we've got all of our user attributes adjusted and set up accordingly for the M company graphic. We've added in the user attribute so it knows what unit we're going to be working with. Because this is a liquid, it's going to be a litre. If it was perhaps maybe a pallet, it could be a piece. And so on and so on, whatever. Uh, so we're going to work with those, that's fine. And again, we can then go ahead and save the map and update all the bits and pieces we've just changed. Okay, so before we get into game and check it's all working where else, just wanted to say that uh, with the M company graphic to work, it's okay to set it all up with the user attributes and the mod desk and the XML and everything else. But we need our script set to actually load all those parts in and make them work. So you need to get the M, uh, the FS17 underscore M company graphics zip, put it in your mod folder, not in your map, in your mod folder. And then when you run the game, it will load that up and look for any M company graphic XMLs and all the rest of it, link all the bits and pieces together and give us our, our graphic on screen in the appropriate places. Okay, so we're in game now where it all began in this particular video. Um, and we've set up all of the appropriate parts in the mod desk. We've made some changes, to some text in the actual giant editor session for the mod itself so that we can link all those parts through the mod desk into the M company graphic XML which we then created and renamed and rest it well we didn't create it we edited or I edited one that was already set up to work for me to then link all the bits and pieces and whatever else um, to give us hopefully our graphic when we get into the appropriate place now one thing I didn't actually do was to show you uh, the how to increase the 
size of the uh, interactive trigger but again you know in this particular case because we have the screen uh, this is where I guess um, I would always come to on this particular mod just walk up to the screen in regards to whether it was on or off if we didn't have that screen attached to it then potentially I would want to make the trigger much bigger because I wouldn't have a specific place on the mod that I would walk up to to get my information so the information would be pretty much anywhere around the mod itself by making the interactive trigger much larger but in this particular case I'm not that fussed because I'm going to walk up to my screen so with that said we'll walk up to the screen and we have our end company graphic show up AB water storage transfer of water transferring and our storage water stored and the appropriate amounts and their percentages and the rest of it so what I'll do because for whatever reason I think with the changes that I made um, in the save game it screwed it up because the input triggers and output triggers are no longer named the same so I've lost all the amount the water that I'd already put in it so I'm going to pause the video and I'll go and grab some more water and then we'll actually test it all out and see that the M company graphic does work and it does show the correct amount and all the rest of it. <clears throat> so I've got my um, water trailer now filled up again. Come into the input trigger, press R. And we have uh, stop unloading water, start unloading water and all the rest of it in the F1 if we want to uh, refer to that. Because it's a water trigger, not an unloading trigger, uh, we don't get anything in our display in the bottom right. But uh, it's pretty straightforward with the F1 menu, it will tell you what you need to do. Uh, so if we actually just pull out of the triggers for the moment, I just want to have a look and see what the end company graphic is showing us before it starts to transfer the water. I've reduced the time factor down to one, so it gives me a bit of time to get in here. So if we actually enter the interactive trigger, you can now see that in the water transferring uh, input side is 7,300 litres because that's what that particular water browser holds. And if I then speed up time a little bit, <clears throat> hopefully the mod will kick in a little bit. There we go. Obviously once it's started up, it will then give us our display and all the rest of it. And you can see the water's gone over from the uh, water transferring to the water stored and it's showing 7,300 litres. But now that it's completed that task, in a short space of time this screen will then go dark. As I mentioned in the first video that I did for this particular mod. And we then would have no information. But now with the M Company graphic, we have the, the information there on our screen all the time. So while, whilst we're inside the interactive trigger. So we will be able to see from that information that we have zero water in our input for transferring, but we do have 7,300 litres in our output. Obviously we have this little screen up here as well, but I think with the M Company graphic showing on screen as well, it gives us that much more information um, to, at a glance, you know, you can just literally get out, walk over, even though the actual unit isn't running, and see straight away in your own company graphic what's going on and the rest of it because you may have put water into the input and it's not doing anything for whatever reason um, and you could then come over and actually look at your information because you wouldn't have this screen activated so your own company graphic is going to give you a lot more information to go on to see what is in the input what is in the output and what it's doing and the rest of it so successfully we now have finished off the mod so to speak we've completed the M company conversion uh, obviously I didn't do the first part of it but that was already done for me by the person who did the conversion or whatever else but um, for whatever reason didn't leave the I uh, didn't include the M company graphic setup so to now have all of that all joined together and working um, we've got a complete mod in my opinion Thank you very much for watching. I'm Shy Wizard and I will catch you on the next one.